In this video, we are discussing the solubility of a solid in a liquid. And first, we are going to talk about the various processes that happen when you mix a solid and a liquid. Let's take an example of a salt solution. So our solute over here is sodium chloride. That's the solid, obviously. The solvent is water. That's the liquid. Now, when you have the sodium chloride and you mix it with water, right, immediately or like after mixing it up for a bit, rather, you notice that the sodium chloride is disappearing. And this process of the solid getting dissolved into the liquid is called as dissolution. So this is the first process that we're talking about. What happens when you have the salt, you're mixing it with water, you see that it disappears. That is called as dissolution. Another thing that happens over here is called as, another process rather, is called crystallization. Now, dissolution and crystallization are opposite. Dissolution is the process where the sodium chloride is getting dissolved into the water. Crystallization, on the other hand, what happens in this case is, now, when you have the water, this water, okay, now you have the solid sodium chloride particles, okay, and you also have the sodium chloride, which is, dissolved in the solution and I'm going to denote that as pink and this is the pink stuff is dissolved into the in the solution what happens is this and the this they collide each other and this leads to the sodium chloride precipitating out this is crystallization I will repeat it once more Dissolution is the process where the sodium chloride is getting dissolved into the water. Now, crystallization on the other hand is basically the two particles that is the solid sodium chloride and the dissolved sodium chloride colliding against each other leading it to the precipitation of or the removal of the sodium chloride into the form of in the form of solid and that's a crystallization. So, these are the two processes that take place. But, it's not necessary that it always does. So, based on the amount of solute in the solvent, we have two different types of solutions. Unsaturated solution is when more solute can be added at a particular temperature. So, this is very important and I will discuss why over there. But, more solute can be added at a particular temperature. On the other hand, saturated, no more solute can be added at that particular temperature. So, in a saturated solution, two processes constantly take place. So, let's write the equilibrium equation. So, solute plus solvent gives rise to solution okay and solute and solvent when they mix and they give a solution that process is dissolution whereas solution giving us solute and solvent is crystallization Okay, now in a saturated solution, there is enough solute for dissolution and crystallization to take place parallelly. So the number of molecules or the number of, yeah, the number of molecules that undergoes dissolution will be equal to the number of molecules that get crystallized. So there is an equilibrium. Whereas in unsaturated, there is still more room for the process of dissolution to still take place at that particular temperature. So, saturated, you can no longer add any more solute to the solvent and that, that's at a particular temperature. Whereas, an unsaturated, you, have, you can add more solute to the solvent at that particular temperature. 
Now, in the previous video, we spoke about the four factors that affect solubility of substances. One, the first two were the nature of the solute and the nature of the solvent. The third was temperature and the fourth was pressure. And we are going to be discussing all of those factors with respect to the solid in a liquid solution. In the previous year or in class 11, I do not know if you remember it right now, you would have learned about something called as polar and non-polar molecules. So in brief, I'm just going to give you a brief idea of that before we start all of this. Now, atoms have varying electronegativities. And electronegativity means the ability of an atom to pull the electrons towards itself. Okay, so let's take for example, carbon and oxygen. Carbon has a less electronegativity Whereas oxygen has a higher electronegativity, which means when you have a bond between carbon and oxygen, it won't just be a single bond. This is just an example for you to understand. The carbon atom will not pull the electrons as much as the oxygen atom will. So the oxygen atom will pull the electrons towards itself. So this leads to something called a dipole. Okay, so... In molecules which have an overall dipole, they are considered to be polar molecules. Whereas the ones which do not have a dipole are considered non-polar. And you would have learned all of this last year. It's fine if you do not remember. You can just go back and revise and you're good to go. So this is based on the varying electronegativities between the atoms. So when you have a solute, Let's take, for example, sodium chloride. Okay, now not all the solids that exist will get dissolved in water, but sodium chloride does, right? Similarly, uh, for example, if we take calcium carbonate, that's also technically a solid that should dissolve in water, right? But it does not. That's because of its varying polarities. Okay, so the next example I would like to call out is uh, where you have a different solvent. Sodium chloride can dissolve in water because both of them are polar. Whereas sodium chloride, um, sorry, whereas sodium chloride does not dissolve in benzene. Benzene is again a non-polar molecule. Based on this, we can come to a conclusion that like dissolves like. So you cannot dissolve a non-polar solid into a polar liquid and you cannot dissolve a polar solid into a non-polar liquid. Basically, only polar will get dissolved in polar, non-polar will get dissolved in non-polar. The next uh, one we're talking about is temperature. Now, temperature most or in some cases, when there is an increase in temperature, there will be a decrease in evaporation. So, <laughs> in solubility. So let's talk about two cases. One where uh, solids whose temperature, when there is an increase in temperature, uh, there is a decrease in solubility and when there is an increase in te temperature, there is an increase in solubility. So let's consider a nearly saturated solution, which means it's almost here, not quite there yet, but it's almost saturated. When the process of dissolution is endothermic, then when the temperature increases, okay, the solubility also increases. That's again based on the Lee Chaclier's principle. So when the dissolution uh, of the solid in the liquid is an endothermic process, then when there is an increase in temperature, there is an increase in solubility. On the other hand, if the dissolution is an exothermic process, then the increase in temperature will decrease the solubility. So it's based on if the particular 
process of salt the pro particular process of dissolution is endothermic or exothermic if it's endothermic and if we add increase the temperature then the solubility will increase whereas whereas in case of exothermic when the temperature is increased the solubility decreases that is all about temperature the last one is pressure now think about this when you have solids and liquids the intermolecular spaces and intermolecular forces that's what we learned last year too right so this is a solid i know it's a little um messy Okay, so you have solids, liquids and gases. So which out of these three states is most affected by change in pressure? The gas. So when you have a change in pressure, either increase or decrease, it will not affect our solid in a liquid solution because these two states do not get affected by a change in pressure. It requires a high amount of pressure to have any effect on these two states and relatively speaking they obviously require more than gases do and that's about it with that we're done with the solubility of solid in a liquid we started with learning about the various processes that take place when a solid gets added to a liquid that is dissolution and crystallization we also talked about the classification of solution based on the amount of solute as saturated and unsaturated and we all, we discussed the various factors affecting the solubility of solid and liquid that is the nature of the solute and solvent temperature and pressure the nature of solute and solvent like dissolves like so polar and non-polar molecules polar molecules will dissolve polar whereas non-polar will dissolve non-polar the uh, you know the mix does not happen Next, we also spoke about temperature. When there, the process of dissolution is endothermic in nature, then when there is an increase in temperature, there will be an increase in solubility. Whereas when the dissolution is exothermic in nature, increase in temperature will decrease solubility. Pressure, on the other hand, does not have a huge effect on the solubility of a solid in a liquid. With that, we're done with this. In the next video, we will be learning about solubility of a gas in a liquid.